All right, good morning, everybody. How to not control the uncontrollable. As I think about that, that has a close association with the word change. And it's imperative, as us as civil servants, that we understand that we've got to adapt and adjust to change so that we don't become obsolete and um, um, obsolete in our public service delivery. And when you think about the word change, it's a global, uh, a global terminology that affects all of us. There's political change, there's social change, there's economical change, technology change, there's organizational change, people change. In fact, there's change in our lives. And in fact, that we are, in fact, organisms that are built on change. We're change agents. Scientists estimate that there's 10 trillion cells in the human body. 30 to 40,000 of those cells are changing every hour. In other words, we're constantly changing. And in fact, that's a reflection of who we are. We've got to constantly be changing. And if you think about that a little bit further, the minute that our cells stop changing is the minute that we stop living. So actually, living is changing. So it's very important as leadership that we understand that we drive change that fosters innovation. And most people are resistant to change when they don't understand the purpose or they think that they're a victim of the change. We have a tremendous opportunity to create a paradigm shift when we think about change so that it could be a catalyst for innovation. The word paradigm shift came from an author called Dr. Thomas Kuhn, who wrote a book in 1962 called The Structure of Scientific Revolution. And basically, his premise was, as you get new information, it changes existing theories. And the best example of that is the study of DNA. We got new information about DNA that has changed medical science, has changed, changed the way that we think about criminology. And in fact, he used a picture of a duck to illustrate his point. He said, if you look at this duck, you can look at it, and you see something automatically. But the more you look at the picture of this duck, you see more information. The more information that you see, it changes your perspective. So your perspective is dep dep depicted on what you see. And so when you look at this duck, if you look closer, you'll actually see a rabbit. And so when you look at that, it's our vision. Vision is the ability to see the possibilities and inspire others to see the opportunities. And we as leaders have an opportunity when we think about change is to see the opportunities, see the possibilities of innovation. So as we travel down this road of service delivery excellence, we can continue to drive value for our organizations. If you think of paradigm shift, there's all sorts of paradigm shifts, but probably one of the most popular examples is social media media. This was created less than 10 years ago. We didn't have social media. And now we have 1 billion Facebook users. The world's population is 7 billion people. One seventh of the world's population is using Facebook. And it just started with a couple of guys that were sitting in the university room that decided to create that. We've also seen some changes in mobility. You think about um, how many of us have a, a smartphone in here? Just raise your hand. How many have multiple smartphones in their houses? Lift, keep your hands lifted. Now, how many are you like me where you have multiple smartphones? smartphones in your house and you've actually text messaged somebody in your house at the same time. <laughs> I got to tell you, things are changing and they're changing very fast. We've got to continue to change as organizations. We've got to continue to change as people. And the rate of change is phenomenal. But the people that have been successful are the people that have embraced change. And the organizations that have been successful are the ones that have embraced change and made that turn into innovation. So we have a tremendous opportunity when we think about change that's happening all around us. We can't control the change. When we come and we go, all sorts of stuff that's happening in life. But one thing we can control is our response. Our response to change, our response to events will dictate the outcome. And a key component of our response is our attitude. Our attitude is a real key indicator because attitude affects outcomes. There will be good things that happen, bad things that happen, opportunities and challenges, the highs and the lows. But our attitude determines whether we'll be bitter or better, whether we'll be a pessimist or an optimist, whether we be grateful or ungrateful. So we've got to understand that our attitude is a key indicator when we're talking about responding to change. And in fact, in an airplane, one of the most important instruments is the attitude indicator. That's actually a real instrument on an airplane. The attitude the attitude indicator determines the orientation of the plane, uh, of the plane, of the airplane to the horizon. It'll tell you if you're leaning to the left, leaning to the right, going up or going down. I would petition to you that our attitude is a key indicator when it comes to change because our attitude will affect our altitude. If you bring a positive attitude, you can bring some positive change. And in fact, when you think of the word attitude, your attitude is just revealing what's on the inside and displaying it on the outside. So if you have a positive attitude, there's something positive happening on the inside. 
inside. If you have a negative attitude, there's something negative happening on the inside. You have a bad attitude, there's something bad on the inside. So we've got to look at change and look at change as an opportunity to create opportunities to soar to new heights with innovation. And that's a challenge today as whatever we do, whether it's in life, whether it's in work, look for the opportunities to bring a positive attitude to drive, to be a catalyst of driving innovation in change in whatever you do. Thank you very much. <laughs>